and welcome back. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the movement step and specifically in this video about vehicle movement. Um, I will cover infantry, transports, and towing in other videos. So this one's mainly just about moving your vehicles around. There are four steps. There's the starting step, movement step, shooting step, and assault step. The starting step, I'm going to do the very last because you have to understand movement step, and the shooting step, and assault step to understand some of the things that's going to happen in the starting step that you have to do. There's some checks and stuff. And so if you understand these three steps, you, uh, the starting step is going to make a lot more sense. So that's going to be the very last one to be covered on all these steps. So again, this one's just going to cover uh, vehicles, infantry, transports, and towing uh, is going to be covered in another video. All right, so in the movement step, one of the things you do is you choose a platoon to move. And so I've got my tanks out here. So here's this platoon, and I talked about how you purchase it. And this one is still going three on my five. So this group went five, and they could be arranged in any order. I mean, it doesn't have to be, they could be in a circle. I mean, if I wanted to, I could make them be more in a circle. I mean, it doesn't, that guy could be there. The rule is, due to your training, dep depicts how far away they could be from each other. So, the thing to remember is that there's what's called a command distance for the unit. And in the previous video, I talked about uh, your training. Veteran, uh, trained, conscript. The less trained you are, like a conscript, the closer they have to be together. The more trained they are, such as being the best, being a veteran, the further apart they can be from each other and still work as a team. So the thing to remember it's multiples of two. Two, four, six. Two, four, six. Two's the worst, six is the best nets. And that two, four, six is how many inches one, in this case, vehicle, has to be away from another vehicle in the group. Now I will add that vehicles are a little different what's considered tanks in this game are a little different add two inches to that so it starts out at four so it's four six eight for vehicles for everybody else two four six so if i bought this group as a conscript will normally be two inches they have to be within each other however because they're vehicles we add two so they have to be within four so Yep, 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 yep. And one of the nice things is they can be strung out. I'll try to get this the best I can. Something like this. All right, so yeah, we're within four. We're within four. Uh oh. But. Is this one within four? Yes. And is this one within four of that one? Yes. So we're okay. Even though these two are not within four inches of each other, it's within four inches of another team member. And this one's within four inches of that one. This one's within four inches of that one. This one's within four inches of this one. So it's not that they have to be within four inches of each other. It's just, is this tank here within four inches of another member of his platoon? Yes. Well, is this one within four inches yeah, here, but what about the rest? They all have to be within four inches of another vehicle in their unit. If you're beyond that, you have to uh, get back in command. You have to get back in command on another turn, on your turn. So, the basics is two, four, six. Vehicles add two. So that's a little about command distance. If they do get out of command distance, What's going to happen? Happen. What's going to have to happen is, and you got a choice. You could just leave it. Let's say these are way up here, 
they're moving on and this one's out of command distance when your turn starts because it may happen things happen vehicle got blown up here this vehicle got blown up so now so boom this vehicle's blown up but they were in command distance now they're not this one's out of command distance this one is not within the four inches oh no he was before but now since that one's destroyed they're out of command this vehicle's out so what you have to do on your next turn is you can leave this here and your commander can run with at least half the unit. So he's fine. He's going to take these three and go on and leave this one behind. That's fine. This one just sits there. It can still shoot, but it does nothing else. If you want him to rejoin this unit, you're going to have to move him enough up to get him in command distance, and that's going to take away from their total movement. So if this takes two inches to get up there, their movement rates drop by two inches now. Now they all can stay together. And again, they don't have to stay in this formation. This one could drop back, this one could go up there, this one can go over there. As long as they don't go further than their maximum movement rate. Now you're probably wondering, well, what's their maximum movement rate? Hmm. What I'll do is I'll bring up a chart that's in the back of the book that's gonna talk about this. Try to zoom in. Hopefully, it'll focus. Okay. What you got is, it says up here, fully tracked vehicles and transports, which I talked about what they were. Other tanks and transports. Infantry and gun teams, we'll worry about that in another video. So what we're really worried about is this top part. And with fully tracked vehicles, such as this tank, think multiples of four. Four, eight, 12, 16. So if you notice, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think I've ever run into a very slow tank. Six, eight, 12, 16. So that's, that kind of threw me there. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. So. Your very, very slow tank is six inches. It's out in the open country. There's nothing blocking the way. It can go six inches. If you have a slow tank, which I've ran into, sometimes like Tiger and some of those, it can only move eight inches if it's open terrain. Standard tank, and this is the one you're gonna run most into, it's 12 inches and then light tank 16. This is what I was saying before, 8, 12, 16. So that's their normal movement rate. So, say these tanks were standard, they can move 12 inches. So I'm gonna zoom back out. They can move 12 inches. This one was out of command because the other one got blown up which could happen. If this one wanted to catch up to them, how far would he have to move to be in command? Not very far, maybe just about an inch. So it's gonna take an inch off their movement rate. So instead of going 12, they only get to go 11. This one can go as 12, because he's catching up to them. If he, doesn't tr if he does not get in command with them, he can't move. Or he, you know, or he has to try to get in command with them. So that's uh, about movement right there. Um, cross country, basically open territory. And um, there's a wonderful, wonderful page in this book. It's on page 30, which goes over. I mean, I think it's just about every type of terrain feature you can think of, and I'll zoom in here just a little bit to let you see what I'm talking about. So it looks like we're looking at hills here, okay? So you have a low rise, gentle hill, steep hill, rocky hill. It's area terrain, we won't go over that right now. Cross country, normal movement rate if you go over a low rise. If they go over a gentle hill, it's slow going, and I'll get to what that is. So if it's gentle hill, they're no longer doing the normal movement rate. 
steep hill, difficult going, rocky hill, most difficult. And this talks about concealment and bulletproof cover, which will um, be covered in the shooting. So don't worry about that right now. This tells us how your movement rate is going to be affected. And down here, it says road, and that's very important too. There it is, road, which it's a road. <laughs> Amazingly. So road. So this, if you ever have a question like, well, I don't know, what what does a fence do to us? Well, hedges and walls, there's fence, go over, it's slow going. So you're not going to get your normal rate. It's going to slow you down. Now you're probably wondering, well, if it's slow going, what's going to be my movement rate? Let's go back to this. And again, just looking at the vehicles right now, these two. Don't worry about the infantry or gun teams. So, if it's rough terrain, which is slow going, pretty much every tank is going to drop to eight, unless it only goes six inches. This one, no matter the terrain, it's going to go six inches. This one was doing eight, it's still going to do eight. This one was doing 16, it's dropped down to eight. This one was doing 12, it's dropped down to eight. So if you're a fully tracked vehicle and you're in the open country, you need to know, are you the 6, 8, 12, 16? If you're going over any type of terrain that's gonna be slow going or difficult or very difficult, that's called rough terrain. And you can see mainly you go down to eight inches except for that very, very slow tank that only goes six. Now. That's not too difficult to remember. If you remember what the multiples of four, except for that six, and everything drops down to eight, except for six. I mean, that's not very difficult. On the road, they keep their cross country speed. So road does not affect a tank. Now, other vehicles, such as half tracks, and Jeeps and wheeled, so here's a Jeep. I don't have any of those motorcycles. Here's a wheeled vehicle, Jeep. They, they're gonna have different movement rates. This is where it gets a little more tricky. This one you're just gonna to have to try to remember the best you can. So what we got first is the Jeep. Okay, so here's our Jeep. If it's going on the open country, 16 inches. Well, I think you can just cruise. On the road, 24 and I'll get to road movement in just a little bit how come that's wow 24 and if it goes into slow going difficult or very difficult terrain four inches that's it four inches it's really slowed down when it starts going into that terrain and it cannot go into very difficult terrain anyway so uh, slow going or difficult terrain Jeeps drop down to four inches from their 16 half tracks such as this one go 12 inches so they go like a standard tank however they go faster on a road than a tank does but boy back down to four inches when we start hitting that terrain it's going to slow us down wheeled this one's wheeled got all our wheels it goes 12, so it goes like a standard tank too. On the road, 18. So this and that, these two are pretty much acting the same. The half track and the wheeled vehicle. And it goes four inches when you hit that terrain. So the non-tank vehicles, it looks like when you hit rough terrain, it's gonna go four inches. That's something just to remember. Tanks, minimum eight, unless they only can go six. The rest of these, four inches. So that's gonna be pretty easy to remember. Memory nerds. This is like a, a slow tank. So that's a slow wheeled wagon, goes like a slow tank. These two move like a standard tank as far as 12 inches. And the Jeep is going to move like a light tank, 16 inches. So again, you have the same kind of movement, eight, 12, 16. However, if you look here with this asterisk, it says these wheeled vehicles 
The half track doesn't have it. It still goes. Oh, it does. Right there. Half track doesn't have it. But the wheeled slow wagon and a Jeep cannot enter very difficult terrain. That says right down here. So this asterisk telling me. And that's very nice. This chart right there. You can look up. Go, oh, I can't go in there. And we'll get to what very difficult terrain is. All right. So that's the deal about movement rates. You got their standard when they're crossing the country. You got their road movement rates, and I'll go over that. And then when they hit terrain that's going to be slow going, they call it rough terrain, but it's, it's slow going, they drop down. It looks like tanks go down to eight, except for that six. Everybody else drops down to four. All right, so. On the movement step, you move your tanks. I pick this platoon. They get a move. However far they, I want to move them, I can move them up to 12, because this is open territory here. I can move up to 12. When I'm done moving that platoon, I pick another one of my platoons and move that one. Then after I'm done with that one, I pick another one of my platoons to move. Now you don't have to move the platoon, but you have to do all your movement before you go to the next step, which is the shooting step. So all movement is done first. I can't move this, then shoot with it, then assault, then pick another unit, move with it, shoot, then assault. It's move all of my units, then I'm gonna shoot with all of my units, which we'll get to in the shooting step. So choose one platoon you wanna move. If you wanna move it, you don't have to, it can stay. There's advantages for some things just staying in place. Move if you want to. When you're done with that step, you move to the shooting step and you're done moving. All right. When you move, I can take this and let's say I move it up here. I can rotate it and have it facing whatever direction I want. I can take the turret and do it like this if I want to. So when you move it, you get to rotate any direction you want to. Now, if I move this over, and this one can go 12 inches, if I move it over to 12 inches, which can happen, and I'll get to that about moving on the double, then you can't do that rotating. So if I move this, if its movement rate is standard tank, 12 inches, as long as it go 12 inches or less, I can rotate it. I can also, let's say these guys are on the road, Here's my road here. And you know what? I want this Jeep here to go and get its 24 inches of movement going down this road. But I got these tanks in the way. Vehicles never block another vehicle. I could just move through them and keep going. Then you're going, okay, well, they're friendly. Here's these enemy stugs here. They're blocking the road. What's Jeep gonna do? It can go through too. So you can't play block them in the corner. Like somebody's in the corner and get all your tanks around them and they can't move. You can't do that in this game. So you can take your vehicle and go through your own or enemy vehicles. You just can't end your turn on top of them. So if this was his full movement rate to get to there, I can't, I'd have to back up like that. So moving through. Now, this is where it gets a little more tricky. There's an infantry team here. And this Jeep wants to go through it. Well, in this case, it's a little different. Vehicles and infantry and gun teams, infantry and gun teams, will not go within two inches of vehicle. Vehicle will not go within two inches of them. So he's going to have to go off the road. He cannot drive through them. They're worried about these guys having bazookas or Molotov cocktails, and they don't want to get anywhere near them. So just remember, if it comes to infantry, vehicles will not go near them. And tank, gun teams, they will not go within two inches of them until it gets to the assault phase. So vehicles, they could be touching each other, and that's fine. Even enemy, they could be touching. 
it's when you get to these men like this and the gun teams like the artillery I talked about gun teams in the other video they will not go within two inches of each other so in this case he's gonna lose his road speed he can't go as 24 now he can only go 16 and he's gonna to have to take the long way around them now if the bad guys let's say they're in a building Here's our building. And these guys are here. Well, they got some windows to look out. This side, there's no windows. So up here, they can see out, they can see in. Everybody can see each other. Even if they're back here, they can see each other because there's an opening to them. Still won't go within two inches of them. That rule still applies. However, you notice on this side, there's no windows, there's no openings. These guys can't see over here. So you can go within two inches of them because they can't see each other. So if they can see each other, that two inch rule still applies. If they can't see each other, you're okay there. They can't shoot each other, can't attack each other. So that's the rule on if they're in a building. So they have to be in uh, line of sight. All right, so I talked about the movement on open country. Now what I want to talk about is road. Now on the road, it doesn't matter if it's a dirt road, like this is a dirt road you can get from Battlefront, um, or a paved road, and these are what I use for paved roads. It doesn't matter. It's, you're going to get the same speed. Tr fully tracked vehicles, it doesn't matter. They're in the country or on the road, they do the same speed. Remember that multiple of four, set for the six. Six, eight, twelve, sixteen. So if this can move twelve, it can move twelve on the road. It can go off, go over here, go off. As long as it doesn't go over twelve inches, Then we have that slow wagon, which I don't have an example of. And that slow wagon, slow wheeled wagon can go 12 inches on the road. Normally it's eight. And what they're saying here with that is it can go one and a half times its normal speed if you stay on the road the whole time. If you don't stay on the road the whole time, I'll get to that. Okay, so. The slow wheeled vehicle can move in open country 8 inches. When it hits this, it can go 12 because that's one and a half of 8. And again, it's on this chart here if you're not sure. So you don't, ha you don't have to do the math, it's, the math is done for you. Uh, the wheeled vehicles, such as this one, when it's on, when it's on the open country, it's going to go 12. However, if it stays on the road, Either one of these, they're, they act the same, dirt or paved in this game. It can go 18 inches as long as it stays on the road. Half track, that's at 12 inches again, just like the wheeled, so it's going to do the same, 18. The cheap, <laughs> they go 16 normally on the open country. If they stay on the road, oh my gosh, 24 inches is how far they can move if they stay on the road. Now you're, you're going, well, what if you want to go off the road? Um, if this moves past its 16 inches, so let's say this is the 16 inches and it's going on, and wants to go off, it has to stop. Because this says it can only go 12. Well, you've already got, or 16 for this guy, and you've already gone over your 16, you have to stop. So his, let me get one that's 12. So this can go 12 inches on open country, 18 here. It's gone 14 inches, it wants to go off. Well, it can only go 12 inches on this, so it has to stop there. Next turn, it can go off. So that's um, if you're going to not do your whole distance, but you've gone over your normal movement rate for the open territory or cross country, then uh, you just have to stop there at the edge of the road. 
Now we're going to talk a little bit about rough terrain. And the book tells you, um, again, on that, on that one page, I think it's page 30. Yeah, page 30. It's going to tell you what each type of terrain is. Slow going, difficult, very difficult, slow going, difficult, difficult, cross country, slow going, difficult, very difficult. And I would suggest that before you play the game, definitely talk to your opponent about what is what, what is this hill, what is this woods, you know, is this uh, difficult going, very difficult, because it's going to alleviate so many problems during the game when one person thinks it's this and the other person thinks it's a different type of terrain. So it's, it's just going to help you in the long run before you even play the game and the terrain's all set up and you're getting ready to talk about the terrain. Um, so rough terrain, um, basically you go that eight inches for, remember that eight inches for fully tracked vehicles and then um, four inches for those others. That doesn't matter if you are going into it, if you're already starting your turn in it, or you are leaving it. And I guess I should clarify that a little bit. So let's say that I've got this. And I'm going to count this as some woods. All right, so put some trees out here to show that this is some woods. Now I don't want to put too many out there because they'll just kind of get in the way. So there we go. All right, so there's my representation of some woods. And you've talked to your opponent about that, but this is woods. And we're going to go to the first step, which is difficult. Or slow going. Slow going. So you and your opponent decided that this terrain is slow going. All that means is that, and I'm going to move this up so I can get the stuff up here. That means that this slows you down. Now, instead of going it's 12 inches, it's down to it's 8. Instead of this going it's 12 inches, it's down to 4. Okay, so slow going slows you down. And uh, since this can only go eight, if it's gone less than eight inches, it can continue till it gets to its eight inches. So it starts here. And basically it took it two inches to get there. That means it has six inches it can go into here. Oh no, he took down a tree. However, he's back here. He decides he wants to go over here to this corner. And as you see, it took him six inches to get here. He only has two inches left to get up to there. So you can't go over the maximum you're allowed for the minimum. This says, or the, for the minimum, uh, I hate to say minimum, but uh, this says the maximum you go is eight. This says 12. The eight's going to win out. The max you can do, period, if you're going to go in here, is eight inches. If it took you, Nine inches to get up here, you stop at the edge. Because this says, hey, you can only go eight. You've already gone nine. You can't go in here. You've gone one inch over what I'm allowed, what I'm allowing. So keep that in mind. That is slow going. Slow going is really simple. It slows you down. And if you remember, eight inches, except for that one. And the rest of these, looks like they do four. All right. The next one up is uh, difficult. So we've gone slow going, slows you down. Difficult is still slow going, so it's still going to slow you down that same rate. So now we're going to make this uh, difficult terrain, which woods normally are difficult terrain, just to kind of let you know. So these woods are sitting here. This tank wants to go in and it reaches the edge. So we're gonna go right there. You put it halfway on. He's got movement rate still to go in, or still go on, or he's this is as far as he can go. He's entering it. You take a die, 
and you roll. If you roll anything but a one, you're okay. If you roll a one, that becomes a problem. Let's see what happens with this guy. All right, three. So let's say he's got his six inches of movement left. So he's gonna go his six inches and he's gonna make it up to here. Then his buddy's starting to come in and they're all trying to make it in here and they have six, it took them exactly all the same. Uh, it took him two inches to get up here. So I have to roll a die six for each of them. Uh oh, there's the one. He's gonna sit there for a minute. This one, he rolled a two. And uh oh, that one rolled a one. So this one is gonna continue up. And I'm just gonna throw it up there. I'm not gonna measure it. It went six inches. These two rolled a one. It becomes what's called bogged down. So we have to put a marker on it. So you are reminded and your opponent knows that those two are bogged down. If you are bogged down, they get to do nothing for the rest of the turn. These guys are trying, they're stuck on a tree stump or a marsh or something. They're, they're stuck. They're trying to get their vehicle unstuck so they can continue on next turn. So basically, if you roll that one, you're stuck. You don't get to do anything with them. They can still continue to act. These two, for this turn, can't shoot, can't salt, can't move anymore. They do nothing because their crews are busy trying to get them unstuck from whatever they're stuck on. So that's one of the bad things about that. Same with these. If they did it, they do a bog check. Half tracks do a bog check. Jeeps. All your vehicles are going to have to do a bog check if it's difficult going. Slow going just slows you down. Difficult going is the next step up. It's still slow going, but there's that one check you got to do. Don't roll a one. And when we get to starting step, I'll go about getting, well, I can do that now. Unbogging, no, we're going to do that on starting step because I don't want you to get confused. Just remember that if you move, you get bogged down. The starting step is where you're going to try to get unbogged. And we'll get to that when we get there. All right, so now we're heading to what's called very difficult. So we've gone to slow going. We've gone to difficult, which is slow going, but with that bogging check. Now very difficult is the same thing. So it took them the same amount of movement to get up here, that two inches, let's say, and they got to roll that D6 for each of these. So I'm gonna get their D6s out here. However, it's not a bog check. This is a skill check. So how well trained are these guys? And again, it's that three, four, five that I talked about in that video. Three, four, five. Conscript, trained, veteran. If you got veterans, three plus, they continue on. One or two, they bog down. So again, we're just going, are we bogged? This is like full of trees. Oh gosh, it's really, really rough through here. And again, if you're not sure officially kind of what uh, the Battlefront does, go to this. It tells you, oh, very difficult is a rocky hill. Very difficult, a gully wall, a steep bank or low sea wall. Oh, shallow river is very difficult going. So it tells you, so you're not like guessing. You and your opponent can go, yeah, I agree, it's this, this. Okay, so again, let's say these guys are trained. So I'm gonna have to roll four or higher, and I have to roll each of them separately four or higher to have them continue on. Six, he's gonna to get to go. Four, oh, I'm rolling good. Uh-oh, well, he would bog down no matter what. One, and a one. So, again, get the markers, put them down to remind you and your opponent that those two are bogged down, these two can continue on. Now the last one is impassable and is exactly like it sounds. Nothing can go through it. Tanks can't enter it, infantry can't enter, it's impassable. Now, I'm gonna go back to what the trees actually are, which is difficult going. So it's just a normal ball check. And these guys, the other tanks got destroyed. So 
these two tanks were sitting out here and somehow they got destroyed. So I have these tanks in there. Actually, I'm going to have this one stay alive. So, we've got these tanks. This one's over here. So I'm going to demonstrate all the possible things. Okay, it's start of your turn. This one wants to go through to over here. This one's already in it. He wants to go over there. This one's here and just wants to back out and go around. All these require a bog check because the bog check is if you enter it, if you start it in there and you're moving through it, or if you're leaving. So this guy's going to be leaving. He's in it. He's leaving. This guy is in it. So he's moving through it. And then this one is just entering. So bog check. Remember, just don't roll a one. Oh, he's fine. So he's going to go and stop here. This one is wanting to go. Uh oh. I did roll a one, so he is now bogged down on a stump or something. So he's out of the action this turn. This last one wants to get out. Oh, he made it with a six, so he backs out. However, if he re-enters, he's going to take another check. If he just goes through here, it's only that one check. Because this is through his one turn he entered, and he's still staying there, and he can leave. It's... So there... So if he goes here, he's going to do another check. So he's just going to go out there. So that's your bogging check. There's slow going. There's no check at all. Just slows you down. There's difficult, which is just don't roll a one. There's very difficult, which what is the skill level of your guys? Conscript, trained, or veteran. And finally, impassable, you can't go through. And the first three, slow going, difficult, and very difficult, are all slow going technically they all slow you down all right so that's it on that now on linear terrain would be something like a fence that's like the shrubbery hedge here here's another like a stone fence the only rule to this is um, Depending upon what type it is, it'll tell you what type of check. It may be a slow going, so you just go over it. It may be a difficult or very difficult. Depends upon the terrain. You and your opponent will decide that. Again, go to that page 30 if you're not sure. The rule with this is you can't stop on it. If you get there and you can go over it, but you don't have enough movement to make it all the way across, just, you have to stop in front of it. Or you can stop back here. If you have enough movement, then you can go on over. So when you measure this, this don't make this mistake. Don't measure, oh, yeah, I can make it. Cool, I made it. That is a big, big no-no. What happened was I just gave myself some extra inches of movement there because what I did was I measured from the front three inches. And what I do to get here, I put the back of the vehicle. You can't do that. If you measure from the front, you stick it on the front. If you measure from the back, then you can do the back. So if I'm going, okay, I got three inches of movement. Um, oh, I won't be able to make it. I'm going to stop there. So, I guess I should have clarified that at the very beginning. When you measure, measure from one point of the vehicle, and that's where you're going to put the other point, that same point. So if he's going to go 12 inches, let me show you the difference. I'll get two tanks out here. And I'm going to move them 12 inches, one legally and one illegally. So, is it good? Yeah. Okay, so here's 12 inches, legally, here's the 12 inches, I'm going to get them where, like that, so it's here, 12 inches, illegally. Look how much more distance I got, because I didn't do it correctly. I got this whole length of this vehicle here, which is one or two inches, let's see, oh, 
that's about two and a half inches. I got two and a half inches more on what I shouldn't have got. So again, if you measure from the front, you place the maximum distance at the front. Don't use the barrel, use the base of the vehicle. So I can't measure start the front end and put the back end at the max distance. You'll there's people that watch that and get busted. Then you could call cheater and stuff like that, and you don't want that. Okay. Next thing is moving through gaps. So I've got a road here. Got this. And then there's that. That vehicle's got shot and blown up. Okay, and then there's that. So here's my situation. Let me move this down where you can see a little better. I got these two houses, got a road, and this vehicle that's blown up in between them. But there's this gap in between here. Now, this blown up vehicle is no longer uh, a friendly or enemy tank. It's now a terrain feature. It's slow going. It's gonna slow you down if you have to travel over it. So, the tank, my tank comes along and goes, oh man, I need to get right here. So I get a good clear shot off in that direction. I need to get there. Well, the way to tell is if it fits between, you can, see the width of the vehicle fits between there, you can continue on that and not have to worry about either of these terrain features. However, it's in the middle of the road. It's kind of turned a little like that. Well, I can already see it's not going to fit. So, I have a choice. I can go around and hope I have enough movement rate of my 12 inches to make it around there. I can go through a building which is very difficult terrain and only fully tracked vehicles can do that. So, that's going to be a skill check. Whew, even if I'm veteran, that's a 3 plus. Or, I can go over this it's going to slow me down, and I hope I have enough movement to get up there. Now, will this half-track fit through? I don't think so. So the half-track's in the same situation. Now I'm going to bring out two different Jeeps here. There's this one, and that one. The only difference between this one is this one's got a base on it. And I'll bring it up a little bit so you can see. So that one's got a base. This one does not. When you measure the gap distance, do not measure with the base. Use the vehicle itself. So in this case, I'm pretty sure the Jeep could get through. Yeah. So the Jeep's not going to be slowed down by that. It's just going to zoom around it. So that's one of the things to watch for with a gap. Does the model, not the, not the extra base on it, does the model fit through there? And this little guy, he's definitely not going to fit through there. So that's moving through gaps. Um, I'm going to bring out those tanks again. All right, um, let me bring out my forest again for this demonstration of what I'm going to talk about. So I got my woods out here. And the tanks. Oh, where's my tanks? All right, that's what I'm looking for. All right. In that one video, I talked about teams, and then you got the command team. So here's my commander. It's the one with the little dude in it, right there. The others are just regular, his backups. So I bought five tanks with this unit. And they're going rumbling in. This one makes it in. This one, my commander, gets bogged down. He got bogged down. His tank got stuck. This one makes it in and goes up there. This one gets bogged down. And this one makes it fine. Well, when your commander's out of commission, he's busy like this, these guys are not going to go anywhere. If you lose your commander to platoon, 
they're just going to sit there. They can shoot, but they're not going to move. Now, I can go, oh, at the end of any turn, a commander can take over another tank in his unit, of his platoon, I should say. So this commander's bogged down. He just bogged down. He wants to be able to keep these guys going. Um, they give some rerolls. So he's going to go, man, I can't stay here. He can take over any other tank in his platoon as long as it's within the command distance of him. So if he's a veteran, normally that would be six inches. Two, four, six. However, it's a vehicle, so adds two. So is anybody with him? Oh, he can take, he can take over in these tanks. And basically what you do is you would do something like that just to make it simple. And now, and this happens at the end of any step. The end of any step. The starting step, the shooting, moving step, the shooting step, or the assault step. At the end, on your turn, at the end of any of those steps, he can just take over any of his other people in his platoon if he gets bogged down. Now, your um, higher in command teams, which is the very, 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 very top. There's higher command, command team, second in command, and then like this guy, which was a platoon commander. Uh, the higher command teams can take over any tank, friendly tank. I should say that. Very, any friendly tank that's in command distance of them. A company or second in command teams can take over any tank in their company. There are some things with allies, like British and America working together, stuff like that. So if it's a higher command, he could take over a British tank if he wanted to. Um, if it's a company, if it's your co company commander or second in command that's got stuck, they could take over any tank that's only part of their company. So if they're working with British, they can't take over a British tank. Um, another thing is, let's say for demonstration purposes, that uh, somehow I got a stolen stug, okay? And it made it in there. It's part of this platoon. Somehow I got a stolen stug. And this one gets bogged down. He can take over this one. Now I'm not going to do that. Basically, instead of him running around in this tank, he is now running around in this stug. So. Now we're going to get to moving at the double. We talked about the different movement rates you can do. That 12, uh, multiple to four, seven to six, six, eight, 12, 16, and then pretty much the same for those other vehicles. And then there's that slow going. And now we're going to talk a little bit about, and we talked about roads, which is one and a half times, but they have to stay on it the whole way. The last thing like this I really want to talk about on, uh, well, not the last thing is uh, moving at the double. Normally this tank can go 12 inches. It can move what's called move at the double. Anybody can do this. They can move, unless the rule says otherwise, they can move at the double. And when they move at the double, just double their movement rate. So now instead of going 12, this guy can go 24 inches screaming across the table. That Jeep. That Jeep that could go 16 now can go 32 inches across the table. That very, very slow tank, let's say this is a, this is our slow tank, 8 inches, it can now go 16. And you're like, wow, that's awesome. Well, there's a few, you know, stipulations. If you're going to run into any slow going terrain. So... There's this. And this tank wants to get around it going at the double. Uh, it can't go through here. Because remember, 8 inches max. Period. Not 16. 8 inches max for this tank. So it's going to have to go around. You normally have to go in a straight line. So if the enemy's up here, I'm going to put these dudes here. Here's the enemy. And let's uh, 
let's pretend that this is is 24 inches to here. He would have to go straight there. He, you, and also when you move at the double, you don't get to rotate. You point the direction you're going. So I can't go like that and then turn. So if he's going over here, from here, he's going to end up pointing that direction. I can't go like this. Now, There's a problem. He actually wants to get over to here, moving at the double. What he has to do is, he's going to have to go around this terrain, not go within two inches of them, and end up facing that direction. Because that's the way he's having to go. He doesn't get to go, oh, good, now I'm over here. So you can, you have to go the most direct route. But if you go around terrain, because you have to, you can't go, you cannot go through any terrain going at the double. I mean, well, cross country you can, but anything that's going to slow you down, any slow going, difficult, very difficult, of course, impassable, you have to go around. And when you're done moving, you have to face the way your vehicle went. So I can't do that. Also, whoops, I just made another mistake. Also, you can't go within eight inches of an enemy. So he couldn't even do this. That was one of those. Any, you can't move within eight inches of any enemy you can, any enemy. Also, if the unit is pinned down, and I'll get to pinned down in shooting. If the unit is pinned down, they can't move at the double either. And you're going, wow, that's awesome. I get to move all the way across the board. Why don't I do that? I mean, I'm just going to start off the game. I'll move everybody at the double. We're going to be there, and the game's going to be, poop. I'm going to win. Well, the, there's, <laughs> there's a reason you, you probably don't want to do it. One of the things is, all right, you're racing up there. All right, I moved at the double. Woohoo! And I forgot something. Hold on. When you move at the double, I forgot, you need to mark that they moved at the double. It's very important. Definitely mark that you moved it. I've seen demonstrations and stuff where things moved the double and they didn't mark it and people forgot. So, and you're going to find out why you want to mark, why this needs to be marked here in just a minute. Now, if they move at the double, they cannot capture that objective this turn. So when it comes to did you capture the objective? Well, no. They got their move at the double marker down here. So, no. You cannot capture an objective moving at the double. Also, if you move at the double, that's all they do. They don't get to shoot. They don't get to assault. Another nasty thing about when you move at the double is um, when we get to shooting step, I said I was going to talk about a little bit about the why it was easier to hit not your training but the other people's training conscript trained and veteran about hitting them um i'll step i'll do a little bit about that when you're a veteran you're going to use this terrain isn't flat per se there's actually like little heels gullies and the veterans know how to use those to get where they need so they don't get it shot at as much conscripts just let's go with move at the double, you don't care. You're just streaming across the field. So, here's this stug. You moved at the double. It's their turn. They're going to be shooting. Normally, he gets two dice at you. If you move at the double, they get double the dice at you. He's going to be shooting four shots at you instead of only two. And that's everybody that's going to be shooting at this unit that moved at the double. If it's a poor little infantry unit that moved at the double, and let's say this is another machine gun unit that gets, normally gets six dice, well now they're getting 12 dice to shoot at them. Because they're just 
rip Warren across the terrain. Just let's get across, guys. Let's go. They're not worried about getting into gullies. They're just streaming across, so it's much. They're easier targets to hit. So, you can move at the double. Sometimes I mean I've done it because there's an emergency. You need to get somewhere. However, they don't get to do anything else. You can't move within eight inches. Uh, watch terrain, because and you can't rotate. So when you go around terrain, you're going to be facing a certain direction. How you come out of it. Uh, also, the you can't capture objective, and the opponent gets double the amount of shooting dice at you. However, artillery and airplane, this doesn't matter. It, it's like it's not there. If you're shooting artillery at them or an airplane at them. All right, the last thing. Yep, this is the last thing I just want to go over, and that's uh, and I kind of touched on it, and that's uh, moving into buildings. And I kind of touched on it. I'll just briefly go over it again. Um, only fully tracked vehicles. So this tank can do it. This half track, no. Can, and it doesn't. Have, there doesn't have to be an opening. Uh, when your men go in a building, which when I get the infantry moving, um, infantry, they need a place to go in. There's windows here, so they won't be able to enter this side. There's no entrances. You can consider that an opening. They can get in there. Tanks don't care. They make their own. And it's a slow going. However, this is very difficult. So again, it's a skill check. What are they? Conscript trained or veteran. That's going to tell you what you need to roll to keep from getting that wonderful bog down. So that was the last thing I want to touch on movement. So that's all I've got. Uh, next, I'm going to hit on um, infantry. There's some uh, in gun teams, and hopefully I can throw transports in there. I'm not sure. Infantry is really easy about moving. So I might be able to throw about the transports into that video. So, until next time, have a good game.